So a little life update. I packed my bags, put everything I owned in storage. Purchased a one-way ticket to Asia. Flew for 14 hours. Landed in Japan. And I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be more like a digital diary. It's gonna be me getting really vulnerable. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like in my videos, I've never really got a chance to sit down and just like be real and have like these conversations. So that's what we're gonna do. This last year has been the best and worst year of my life. In some ways, honestly, I was really thriving. I had my own place. I had a career that paid me pretty decent money and I had a hobby that I really loved. But despite all this, deep down inside, I was still really broken. In 2022, I got out of a really toxic relationship and that relationship left me feeling so confused, unsure of who I am, my place in the world, what I really wanted in life. When you've been gaslighted and told that you're just way too much, you're not good enough, you're undeserving of love and then no one's gonna love you, it really brings down your self-esteem. And I consider myself a really strong person, but this can literally happen to anyone. I look like a dumpling! I look like a dumpling! <laughs> it sounds so weird. Hit rock bottom. This is what rock bottom looks like. And because I'm so hard on myself, when I got into that relationship, it was just so difficult to accept that I got myself into a toxic relationship. I didn't have a lot of compassion towards myself because I was just annoyed that I got myself into that mess. And then I got myself into another mess. I got myself involved with a boy. That's a first. But a lot of my friends were also going through this. One of my friends, she ended up booking a one-way ticket to Europe. And when she did that, I was like, <laughs> wait take me with you like i want to escape i just wanted to leave vancouver i put my one-way ticket to asia the few months before i left for asia honestly things started looking up real good first off my supply guy he offered me a discount if i were to stay the place i was staying at while it was like not the nicest place ever it was still pretty nice it was really conveniently located and i was paying pretty decent rent and there are some teachers within the dance community that started teaching intensive programs and I really wanted to be a part of that but it was all happening while I was going to be in Asia. I started making some friendships with some new people that I didn't know I would bond with so deeply and I love the fact that they can see me, they can see my soul, my heart, understand that and despite all of my imperfections and despite all of my insecurities and all my shortcomings they can truly still see the good and still gas me up and remind me that i'm that bitch you're that bitch you will always be that bitch because when are we not that bitch it was truly so special for me and to leave behind connections like that was extremely hard but i have faith in my relationships and i have to think in abundance and i have to remember that despite this journey that I am on, despite the distance, despite the time, if those relationships are meant to be, they will survive. I can either choose between two paths, stay where I'm at, be comfortable, polish in everything that I have been growing, or I can start a whole new path. There's just so many reasons for me to stay in Vancouver, and there are so many things discouraging me from leaving. So me being me, I went on Reddit. <laughs> Honestly, ChatGPT and Reddit have been a great source of therapy because i can't afford real therapy right now someone wrote back and they commented sometimes things get better before they get worse let that sink in it reminded me of toxic relationships when you're about to let something go something will always hold you back whether it's your partner and they'll say things like things are gonna get better i promise i'm gonna change and then you stay and it does get better for like two weeks then things go back to what they were like before but the crazy thing is that it never goes back exactly to what it was like before. If anything, it gets worse because you staying means that you gave something up or that you dug yourself into like a deeper hole and now you're further invested in this. Had I stayed in Vancouver, I don't know if things would have gone worse, if things would have gone better, but what would have happened was that I would have probably signed another contract to stay for a year and 
I wasn't prepared, nor did I think I had the emotional capacity to stay if things were gonna go back to the way they were. There was a reason that I booked a one-way ticket to Asia. There's something that drove me to this. I was just that unhappy. I was supposed to move and get the help of someone from TaskRabbit. This guy ended up being so shady. I had to cancel and it was not for my really good friend Julie. Girl, thank you so much. I freaking love you. I don't think I've ever said that to you because <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with some of my feelings, but I love you. This girl literally spent eight hours with me moving and doing physical labor and she just like stuck with me through the end. Ew, look at all this dust. That's why I wear socks today. <laughs> Honestly, if it was not for her, I wouldn't be here right now. And I'm always going to be grateful for that. Okay. Welcome to my vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did it work? Did it come off? No. There you go. <laughs> Yay, we did it. Despite all of the friction that I was facing, I still got on that plane anyways. And that is when my luck turned around and I became the luckiest girl in the world. I overpacked, no surprise there. But the guy that was working, Plus, he let me on my plane anyways. I was just a couple of pounds over, but thank goodness he let me on. <laughs> the flight attendant and I, we were vibing hard, so she gave me free gummy bears. That was so sweet. Didn't get a window seat like I wanted. I was choosing between two aisles. I just randomly chose one. I chose the best aisle in the world. The guy who had the window seat noticed my love for the window and was so nice. He offered me the window seat and took the middle seat. so nice he took the middle seat not even the aisle the middle seat sucks the other girl nicest girl in the world i literally invited her to stay with me at my hostel and we spent the night together not like that this could have been either like a criminal minds episode or it could have been like the best story that you're ever gonna tell i'm so lucky that she didn't end up being like a serial killer or she didn't rob me she was so nice and i honestly feel like i knew her in another life or something we made it we vibed hard and it was just so easy to talk so we spent the entire time that she was in tokyo together helped each other film and create some vlogs walked around the city ate a lot of food had some really great conversations honestly the best one day friendship i've ever made unfortunately she had to leave and go to back to manila so i'm back being a solo trapper and i'm a lonely traveler again to make a friendship like that that only lasted like a day but to fill it with so many memories like we literally got stranded in Shibuya because we forgot that the trains closed <laughs> and then we got incredibly lucky and this kind taxi man offered us a discounted ride to get us back home because we literally were stranded we got hit on looking like this <laughs> um <laughs> that experience was so amazing and to start off my trip with so many blessings i feel incredibly fortunate it's weird though because some days i wake up and i feel like i'm living someone else's life i'm in japan and it's incredible the world is literally my oyster and then some other days I wake up and I feel incredibly low. I feel so lonely. And the time difference makes it extremely hard to have conversations with friends back at home. Anytime I'm out, they're probably sleeping. If I'm about to go to sleep, they're waking up. And it doesn't help that I go on social media and I see all my friends and they're, you know, bless their souls and I'm happy for them. They're getting married. They're having children. All my dance friends are doing these intensives and getting a lot better. Some of my friends are advancing in the work field, getting promoted. And then here I am at 26 years old, unemployed, with no home, in a country where I don't even know the language or have a single friend, and I have no idea what I'm doing in my life. That's stressful. Some people are like, oh, you're gonna eat, pray, love this. You're maybe gonna meet the love of your life. <laughs> That's not the goal of this trip, honestly. Like, my goal is to get away from all these guys. But the thing is that I have no goals. Like, I just don't have a single goal for this trip other than to visit a lot of countries. I don't know, like, maybe it's a quarter life crisis kind of thing. I've spoken to some people where they said these travels literally changed their life. And I've spoken to some other people where they're like, yeah, it was fun, but like, nothing really changed. I'm still me i don't know like i don't know who i'm gonna become after this trip i don't know what's gonna happen where i'm gonna be i literally just booked bali tickets like a couple of days ago so i'm really just surrendering into like the unknown 
and just taking things on a day-by-day -day basis and letting life take me and having faith in the universe and having faith in myself so if you guys want to tune in onto that journey i do have a couple of japan vlogs that i plan on uploading really soon i've gone to akihabara um harajuku and shibuya so i'm really excited to take you guys along with me on this journey and yeah make sure you like and subscribe if you want to be part of this i don't know i feel like i'm starting to ramble because again like I have no idea what I'm doing and I have no idea what I'm saying because I have no idea what I'm doing. Anyways, I will see you guys very soon in my next couple of vlogs. And to my beautiful friends in Vancouver, I love you guys so much and I miss you guys and I will see you when I get back. Bye.